will shine a light on the complex metaphysical work done on the ESO Abernester from the early years aboard the vessel till present day. Hello, I am Flibian Claude Kronschkin, and here are my most anticipated CG books. Let's call it a top five. Thank you. Starting with number five, Fiendish. When I first heard this book promoted on Comics Game Kings, I scoffed. What is this manga trash, girly, twilight bullshit? Who is this oriental girl squeaking and drawing that gloriously intricate and beautifully detailed background and establishing shot? Holy shit! Seriously, who is this? This is amazing, I thought. That annoying oriental girl turned out to be Irene Strakowski, the would-be genius girl member of CG. And the book that she was birthing into creation was Fiendish. From what I can tell, Fiendish is about a group of survivors traumatized by and investigating the origins of nightmarish, demonic, and disgusting tentacle monsters who murder people. What really got me excited about the book is the real love and attention in Rini's world-building. There is a map of the world she created, Discara. Multiple races with defining traits and characteristics, and even a language. I can honestly say I'm very much looking forward to these books, Finish 1 and 2. I'm giving them a chance. However, I enjoy world building as much as the next guy, but story and how you tell it is important. It's quite an important metric. I'll review the books once I read them. As it currently stands, out of everyone I've seen in CG, Rini is a genie and a top tier creative. And that's why her book comes in at number five. Thank you. All right. Coming in at number four is someone whose art does all the talking for him. Sir Kenneth Roquefort. As soon as I saw Groken, I knew that I had to pick it up. I'd never heard of Kenneth Roquefort until Groken, and so it came as no surprise to learn that he was and still is a legendary comic artist. The art in Groken is just phenomenal, containing some of the best illustrations I've ever seen. I am excited for the art, to study it closely, intimately. This is a book that I honestly only purchased for the art. I have no idea what the story is about. And frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The art alone sells this book. Hopefully, seeing as it is a comic book, this story is just as good, but even if the story is abysmal, the art is so stunning that I don't think it would matter. Looking forward to reading Croken 1 and 2. Thank you. At number 3, we have John Malin's Godlike. I don't know much about this book, but since 2019, when I discovered CG for myself, I was introduced to John Malin, a scrappy, edgy, endlessly trolling, free speech absolutist with a real passion for literature. I've heard John Malin boast numerous times of how godlike his skills are, and I'm eagerly anticipating the release of his magnum opus, Godlike. John jabs and jests about his skills. He talks about how good he is. Honestly, he talks a lot of shit. And due to the amount of respect CGs seem to have for him in particular, 
as well as a strong sense of loyalty to the movement he displays, I am curious to see if he can back up his grand posts with action. To put it plainly, I'm expecting Godlike to back up all the shit John talks. I've seen the art from it, and the art is strong enough, skilled and simplistic, ideal for sequential art. I'll be judging John's book on a level I'm not judging others. I'm anticipating a book that I'd expect to find on a bookshelf in heaven. If the story and writing are on par with the art, Godlike may very well be a true 21st century comic masterpiece, ascending to that hollowed hole of splendor in the imaginations of men joining the likes of other legendary comic artists who have made a permanent home in the subconscious of humanity. However, if the story and writing are lacking in any way, godlike may turn out to be human after all. Thank you. Here we are. We've arrived at number two. And number two is none other than the crown king of the comics game. One Ethan Van Skyver. Cyberfrog 2 Wrecked Planet. 90s Cyberfrog got me back into independent comics. The tongue in cheek stream of consciousness, viciousness, and fourth wall breaking that Cyberfrog embodied is what sold me on the character. Cyberfrog is in my top 10 favorite comic characters of all time. I really, really. Really dig Cyberfrog from the 90s. From the 90s. Ethan Van Skyver was the name I kept hearing people lament over. So much so that I just had to see who this evil, racist, Nazi, capitalist, fat fucker was. Imagine my surprise when I saw that EVS was not only incredibly handsome in a face for radio kind of way, but also the creator of Cyberfrog Blood Honey, the highest selling crowdfunded indie comic book of all time. Quite possibly the world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. I tuned into his YouTube live show, laughed my knickers off, and ended up purchasing Blood Honey. A very beautiful book. Cyberfrog is basically a reboot of Cyberfrog from the 90s. My favorite Cyberfrog from the 90s. With a more serious tone, Wrecked Planet hopefully brings something in terms of story and writing more satisfying than the first book. Wrecked Planet is the second book in a series of six planned Cyberfrog books EVS is crafting. I love Cyberfrog, and I will definitely be backing all the books. The same cannot be said for the other books on this list. They've got to sell me on their characters. But when it comes to Cyberfrog, I'm sold. The character really is something special. Ethan's writing and storytelling ability leave much to be desired. But Cyberfrog is so damned cool. I believe that Ethan's writing ability will eventually match his phenomenal drawing skills. And that may have already happened on Wrecked Planet. Regardless of if the writing and storytelling is solid or amateurish, I'm all in on Cyberfrog. The IP holds so much potential, and I really do believe in the character. Here's to hoping Wrecked Planet delivers. Thank you. And finally, my personal number one, Terror in the Trenches by Von Klaus. I've read my fair share of CG books, and none of them save Justin Murphy's War Party comes close to Von Klaus' first CG book, Monster MD, a bona fide independent masterpiece, a masterclass in nearly perfect execution of sequential storytelling. Von Klaus shines as a screenplay writer, and his experience is on full display in Monster MD. I picked up Monster MD because of the story and art, satisfying on every level, 
Monster MD, an animated film waiting to happen. Monster MD remains my favorite CG book, and Ron Krause remains my favorite CG author, with Justin Murphy coming in second place. Nothing contrived or accidental, nothing that abhorts the suspension of disbelief. Von Klaus is many leagues above the rest of the comics gate riffraff when it comes to writing. This young man knows how to tell an original compelling story, and the art, although cartoony, is beautiful, complex, streamlined, and simple. Or as he describes it perfectly, Bruce Tim on steroids. <laughs> Aside from Cyberfrog, I believe in Von Klaus's ability to deliver yet another masterpiece with terror in the trenches. And so I cannot wait to get my hands on his latest masterwork. Thank you. And there you have it. My top five most anticipated comic skate books. I pride myself on having unbelievably high standards. And when a work of art shows signs of rising to my standards, I take notice. If you didn't make the list, the most important list of all time, it's not because I haven't seen your book. I've seen your book. I've seen all the books. Your third rate piece of shit wasn't good enough to make my top five. Now, is everyone the world over knows? I go by the name Nico Patelico. I do it cause it's fun. I do it for number one. It's off the top of the dome. I'm chilling. I'm at home.